During World War II, France's tank industry experienced a gap, and it was difficult to recover the development of heavy tanks after the war. However, France has an industrial foundation, and with the technological advances gained during the war, they introduced the significant AMX-13 light tank. However, France's development in the Southeast Asian War was not favorable, as the M24 and other light tanks they were equipped with at the time were unable to adapt to jungle warfare. Learning from this experience, France decided to modify the AMX-13 to create a tank suitable for jungle environments, and thus, the AMX-13 FL-11 was born. As one of the best light tanks of the 50s and 60s, why was the AMX-13 not suitable for jungle warfare? This may be related to its autoloader, as once the shell was loaded into the drum, it couldn't be changed temporarily. In jungle warfare, the visibility was obstructed, and the targets were often very close. Dealing with different targets required the temporary use of different ammunition, which was precisely the flaw of the AMX-13. Another issue was that France also wanted to lighten the weight of the tank for rapid deployment and air transport. The changes to the tank were mainly focused on the turret, with little change to the hull. At the time, France also had another mature wheeled armored vehicle, the Panhard EBR, which also used a oscillating turret, but the cannon did not have a clip structure. Therefore, French designers decided to combine the turret of the Panhard EBR with the chassis of the AMX-13 to create a new type of light tank. The new turret was called FL-11, produced by the FAMH company. It was lighter and smaller than the original FL-10 installed on the AMX-13, but provided equivalent protection with 40 mm thick armor and a certain sloping angle, approximately 60 de Grine at the front. The FL-11 was equipped with a shorter-barreled SA-49 75mm cannon with a muzzle velocity of only 625 meters per second. When firing armor-piercing rounds, it could penetrate 80 mm thick homogeneous steel armor at a distance of 1,000 meters. This was sufficient for a light tank and capable of dealing with lightly armored targets. The cannon had an elevation angle of 6 de Grailers to 13 de Grailers. The auxiliary weapon was a 7.5mm Mach 31 machine gun with two smoke grenade launchers on each side of the turret. The tank still had a crew of three, with the commander and gunner fighting in the turret. However, because the gun no longer had an autoloader, the commander had to serve as the loader in combat. Both the commander and gunner had access to the hatch, and the commander had seven periscopes for observing the surrounding situation. The commander's hatch could also accommodate a seat and an anti-aircraft machine gun, although this structure was rarely seen in photos, possibly being an alternative firepower enhancement plan. Compared to the AMX-13 light tank, the AMX-13 FL-11 was about 1.5 tons lighter, with a weight of approximately 12.2 tons. Although the new tank had improved firepower, its weight still did not meet the requirements for air transport. At the time, the French military could only use large transport aircraft with a carrying capacity of about 8 tons. In February 1954, the French military ordered five prototypes for testing and later increased the order to 15 vehicles. During air transport tests, the designers proposed the idea of disassembling the tank for transport, splitting it into three large components to be carried by three planes. Although this solved the problem of air transport, the efficiency was so low that it was unacceptable, and it was better to transport a few armored vehicles instead. With the French military's defeat in Southeast Asia, the French National Army began to withdraw, leading to the specialized AMX-13 FL-11 becoming obsolete. The subsequent order for 15 vehicles was cancelled, and the five previously produced vehicles were stationed in Morocco with the French military and later sold to the Moroccan army. It is said that Morocco had used them in some border conflicts, but specific details are rarely known. It is confirmed that Morocco was still using them in the early 1970s, showing that they were being well-maintained. As a tank developed in the 1950s, the AMX-13 FL-11 was different from contemporary tank designs, as it did not consider all-around defense capabilities, but was based on regional combat. 
It was a weapon developed by France for specific warfare zones, and it naturally became obsolete when the conflict disappeared. As an experimental tank, the production quantity was too low, and as a result, not a single one remains today, which is a regrettable fact.